Hello guys and girls and welcome back to another episode of Seb Talk Sports. Sponsored by Memsham UK. The place to go to for brand new, authentic, signed NFL memorabilia. That intro music and podcast theme was created by all pro New York Giants running back, now music creator and friend of the show, David Wilson. Go and check him out on all of his social media platforms at 4 Still Running on Twitter and Instagram and his music under David E. Wilson across all good music streaming services. He's free for business so drop him a message if you want some beats for your podcast, adverts, commercial absolutely anything you need before i get into this episode i just want to say that if you're not already following seb talk sports across all platforms then please do you can find me on facebook seb talk sports youtube seb talk sports twitter at seb talk sports and instagram where i'm primarily active again it's at seb talks sports today i've got a tremendous guest and the first baseball player i've ever had on my podcast and what a player he was 1973 all-star and two-time world series champion as a coach for his beloved Los Angeles Dodgers, the team with whom he spent a total of 47 years as a member of. A true legend of not only the Dodgers franchise, but Major League Baseball as a whole. It's the absolute inspiration that is Manny Mota. Enjoy! My guest today is a two-time World Series champion who played for and coached the world-famous Los Angeles Dodgers for 47 years. A 1973 All-Star and an absolute icon of Major League Baseball. It's an absolute honour to welcome Manny Mota to Seb Talk Sports. Manny, how are you doing? Seb, how are you? Thank you for the invitation and thank you for that beautiful introduction. I don't deserve but I accept it. You're very welcome, sir. It's an honour to have you on. As you know, baseball is the number one sport in the Dominican Republic. Hmm. Basketball is second. We're proud to produce so many good players and provide them to the major league. It's very hard. They go through a lot of adversity, but they never give up. They got a passion for the game. They got a lot of education, and they try to learn every day and try to improve every day and hmm. try to be better. Because in my opinion, it's always room to improve and get better. Mm-hmm. Don't stop on level. Don't be satisfied in this game. Just try to get better and take your game to the higher level. That's what the Dominican players are doing. They try to learn. They listen to the coaches. And not only listen, they apply the instruction, which is very important. A lot, of, a lot of great memories because I had the opportunity to play with a lot of great players. I learned a lot from good and great players like Roberto Clemente, Willie Mays, a lot, a lot of good players. I had the opportunity to face best pitcher in baseball history, mm. Sandy Kofa. I saw Marisha, I saw Bob Gibson, I saw Nolan Ryan. And all of those guys bring great, great memories to me. I watched Barry Bomb play. I watched a lot, a lot of good players. And to me, I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to be around those great players. I get to meet Jackie Robinson and I get to wear the same uniform. Mm. Wear by Jackie Robinson, Don Nuco, Sandy Kofa, Don Dreister, and so the players who become to be superstars in the major league. I'm grateful to this game because this game gave me a lot, gave me a good opportunity, gave me a lot of great friends. The same talking. I'm very pleased and humble to get back to the game what I learned from the game made your Major League debut on the 16th of April 1962 for the San Francisco Giants against the Los Angeles Dodgers and you hit a fly ball to center field in your first ever at bat which is quite an achievement so how did it feel to play on the biggest stage of them all and announce yourself to the baseball world? Well, you know, that was a great day for me. In my first Major League game, my first at bat, I had the opportunity to face the LA Dodgers. Mm. I was so happy to have a Major League uniform, that uniform with the Giants. The Giants gave me the opportunity to play in the Major League. I come up with them. I played in the minor league system for about six years. See, but playing the minor league system for six years gave me the opportunity to gain experience and to get ready to play in the big leagues. After your time in San Francisco, you were then dealt to the Pittsburgh Pirates, where you hit your first ever career home run off of two-time All-Star Philadelphia Philly Chris Short, and enjoyed six years as one of the league's premier hitters. How much did you enjoy your time in Pittsburgh, and what was your greatest memory as a Pirate? Well, I had great memories with the Pirates because I had the opportunity to be a teammate of one of the greatest players of the game, Mr. Mm-hmm. Roberto Clemente. I admire Roberto as a player, as a person. He was a great, great human being. He was unbelievable. He got a natural ability and he was a guy who always protect and defend the Latin American players and African American. Mm-hmm. Roberto never tolerated injustice. He was a good person, a good man, and he was not afraid to express his feelings. 
Yeah. He was proud to be from Puerto Rico and be from Latin America and representing his country with a lot of pride and a lot of dignity. In my opinion, Roberto Clemente was the best Latin American player I ever see playing this game. Mm. I say this, I had the opportunity and the blessing to be teammates of two of the best players in the game in history. Willie May first and Roberto Clemente second. I learned a lot from both of them and I'm very grateful to them for the advice they gave me during my young days in baseball. More famed for her ability as an elite level pinch hitter and in 1979 even became the all-time leader in pinch hits, retiring with the record in 1982. So in your opinion, how important is pinch hitting in the game of baseball? Well, I believe in those days, good pinch hitter was very important for a ball club because they can decide a game in the late part of the game. See, during those days, if you have a good pinch, you got a good opportunity to win the game because this game produced a lot of good pinch hitters, a lot of great pinch hitters like Lenny Harris, Big Davalillo, John Van der Waal. I cannot mention all of them because they all were good pinch hitters. And my position, I was ready for the game. And I believe the key for me was concentration, preparation, and positive thinking. I was always prepared to do my job and with the help from the fans, the way they received me when I come up to it, I think that elevated my game to a higher level and also increased my confidence. Yeah. So proud of the fans because I believe their support played a big part, big role in my game. In 1981 and 1988, you were a World Series champion as a coach for the Los Angeles Dodgers after making three previous World Series appearances as a player in the 70s. How did it feel to win a World Series and reach the absolute pinnacle of the sport of baseball? Oh boy, that's a that's a dream. That's a player dream. When they sign, they always think about being in the World Series. Mm. And being a winning team, the team who won the World Series in 81, 88, that was a big thrill. That was a great honor, great privilege. That was a wonderful, wonderful feeling, being part of the World Series champion because that opportunity you're looking for, and I thank God for giving me that opportunity, and also all my teammates because they play so hard. Manager, Juan Lasora, player, coach, they all played together as a team, and that's the reason we win, because we were together as a team for the same reason, but a lot of pride, dignity, and a lot of confidence in ourselves. You spent a total of 47 years as a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers, both as a player and as a coach, and you're wearing the hat today, which looks great, and you are unequivocally a legend in the city of Los Angeles. So, how much do the Dodgers mean to you, and is there any words you'd like to say for the Dodgers fans watching this? Oh boy, the Dodgers organization mean a lot to me. I'm proud and grateful to wear that uniform with pride and dignity and grateful to the Dodgers for giving me the opportunity to make in that trade, getting me to Montreal. Mm. Allow me to wear this uniform, this name right here, same with a lot of pride and a lot of dignity. And also give me the opportunity to wear the same uniform whereby Jackie Robinson, Mm. Nuku, Sandy Kova, Don Dreisdell, and some other superstar. And to me, wore the same uniform for those people I just mentioned. Oh boy, it was so grateful, so grateful, so pleased, and so glad. And I thank God for giving me that great opportunity. Where I always represent the Dodgers organization with pride and dignity. Two of your sons, Andy and Jose. Jose, of course, is the Los Angeles Angels play-by-play announcer. Both also played in the major leagues and your youngest son, Tony, coached on the Dodgers. How does it feel to see your sons carry on your legacy and continue to establish the motor name? I'm proud of all my kids because they are good people. They are a good person. They are very humble and they help the needy people. And that made me very proud of them. They are a very nice person. They got a good education. They got good behavior and they respect people and they treat people the way they like to be treated. Some of them make it to the big league for one month. Andy and Jose, Tony was a spin training with the St. Louis, but you know what? The good Lord decided that was not the right profession for them and they choose to get in something else. And now I'm pleased what they're doing right now. Andy is an agent, Jose is a broadcaster, and Tony have another job. So I'm proud of all my kids because they always do the best. They try the best but they never tried to emulate me. Mm. They do things on their own and themselves. I never force them to play baseball because I believe education comes first. Mm. I always told my kids to get a good education because they got to be prepared to face life in case they don't need to make it in baseball. They got something else to do and that was really happening. Manny, I want to end with some quick fire questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so what's your favorite baseball movie of all time? 
Baseball movie? Hmm, that's a good question. I believe I watched Jackie Robbins history, but one movie I thought I really like was the movie I can't remember the name. It was related to the Negro League. Mm. I saw that movie about five times and never stopped watching. Who would you say your favorite music artist is of all time? Oh, that's a very difficult. That's a very tough one because I love music. If I'm going to choose one, you know, Nike and Cole was one of my favorites. Mm. But I like it all. Michael Jackson. Mm. Michael Jackson, he was one of my favorites also. Frank Sinatra, Al Martino. I like them all. I enjoy the music and I love the music they play. What was your reaction to the famous airplane movie quote where you're announced as pinch hitting for Pedro Bourbon? I saw Karina Dun Jabbar and I was surprised watching that movie. Mao Badin for Pedro Bobo. <laughs> Money Mota. I said, wait a minute, I never buy for Pedro Bobo because Pedro pitched for Cincinnati. I played for the Dodgers, but I really enjoyed the movie and I was grateful to mm-hmm. hear them mention my name. I really enjoyed it. It was a very good movie. Who, in your opinion, is the greatest baseball player of all time? The great baseball player of the all time? That's a good question. I got to choose two without taking anything away from any, everybody else. In my opinion, the best two players, which I had the opportunity to see it, enjoy it, learn from them, and evaluate them, I got two, Mr. Willie Mays and Roberto Clemente. Mm. Those were the two best players I ever saw playing this game. The best hitter I yeah. ever saw is Roberto Clemente, Mr. Barry Bonds. Mm. There's a lot of Latinos hitters like Manny Ramirez and Albert Pujol. They in the area. But don't forget, the best player in the game right now is to Mike Tau. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the best at this present moment. But they got a lot of talent, a lot of talent, a lot of Latino talent, a lot of American talent. But Latin Americans got a lot of names, which in the future, they have the opportunity not only to be a star, the opportunity to be super, super star. But they got to work hard, they got to produce, and they got to live up to the expectation. That's my opinion. Annie, thank you so much for your time. This was an honor for me. No, thank you for the opportunity. My best, my regard, for the people who follow your program, your interview, and please stay home. Don't go out. Mm-hmm. Be safe. And also, congratulations to all of those people who put in their life on the line yeah. to save other people's lives. So please take care of yourself. I take my heart off to all of the people, medical people, who do the best that is possible can to save that away. God bless all of them, and God bless you too. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Manny, for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay, you're very welcome. And my best to the people in your country. I wish you all the best, and I wish you a lot of blessings from the good Lord. Thank you, and you too. Thank you. Love and peace. Love and peace. That was my interview with the brilliant Manny Mota, an icon of the game of baseball across the world and just the nicest guy. He had some fantastic stories throughout his time as both a player and a coach. And it was an honour to have the opportunity to hear all about them and share them with you all. And of course, I had to ask him about that famous airplane movie quote. (laughs) Please go and follow Manny on Instagram. The link to his profile is in the description of this episode. I've got many more great guests coming very soon, so stay tuned right here on Seb Talk Sports. And to take us out as usual, here's another brilliant track by all-pro New York Giants running back turned music creator and friend of the show, David Wilson. Catch you soon, guys.